Hi, I'm Ken, and this is my new Prusa i3 Mark III S. I bought it as a kit and built it a couple of days ago. How long did it take? Well, for me, 16 hours. But this is my first 3D printer, so I turned on some tunes and I took my time. I didn't know about the Mark III S when I bought the kit. In fact, they announced it a couple of days before it was due to be delivered to my house. So, what's different about the Mark III S? That part there, the extruder. The Mark III S has a redesigned extruder. Apparently there were some issues with the Mark III sensor not working well with some filaments. The Mark III had an infrared or IR optical sensor that determined when the filament had reached the extruder. The Mark III S still has the optical sensor, but the Mark III S also has a mechanical sensor consisting of a steel ball and two rare earth magnets. The magnets are inserted into the assembly with matching poles together so that the magnets repel each other. This causes the FS lever to push against the steel ball. As the filament is pushed into the extruder, it passes the IR sensor and hits the steel ball, which pushes the steel ball to one side so that it triggers the IR sensor. This way, filament can be optically clear and still trip the filament sensor. During the redesign, Prusa also made the extruder assembly easier to service. You don't have to take the entire assembly apart to change the nozzle or the PTFE tube. Other improvements include split textile sleeves for the wiring and a new case for the Einsi board with a cutaway door section that allows you to easily mount a Raspberry Pi W0 board from the outside without needing to open the case. The smooth PEI sheets also now have an anti-rust coating. So that's what's new with the Mark III S. The question now is, should you buy the kit? or have it assembled by the factory. Having built my printer over 16 hours and 2 days, I think I have a pretty good grasp of what is needed to do it successfully. I felt comfortable ordering the kit because, as a teenager, I built all sorts of plastic models. When I got my first real job, I also bought a Heathkit Hero 1 robot kit and put it together. This may be my first 3D printer, but it's not my first big kit project. With the Hero 1, I had to solder components onto the supplied PC boards, then mount the boards and connect the wires to the appropriate connectors. It was a massive project and took me over six months to complete. That was over 30 years ago. The Prusa Mark III S isn't nearly that complex. The hardest part is the E-axis assembly, which is section 5. It's labeled as very difficult and is the section where you build the new extruder assembly. Fortunately, by the time you get there, you will have already figured out ways to make the assembly easier. For example, Section 2, the Y-axis assembly, is labeled as moderate difficulty and listed as taking about an hour to complete. Steps 1 through 11 were easy enough, but step 12 was the first time I had to press square nuts into 3D printed parts. These nuts are tiny. I couldn't get them to go into the parts straight no matter what I did. I couldn't even see the nuts as I held them between my thumb and forefinger. Fortunately, because I've been working with various electronics projects for many years, I've collected a lot of unique and interesting tools. One of those tools I actually found in my dad's tool collection and used to borrow it all the time. Eventually, I bought my own, and they have served me well over the years. That tool is a pair of medical forceps. I put the tiny nut in the forceps and clamped the jaws down. That allowed me to see the orientation of the nut as I placed it into the printed slot. Once the nut was held in the slot of the 3D printed part, I could use the flat top of my workbench to press it flush with the part. That held the nut securely, but the alignment was off. So, I again used the forceps opening the jaws to use one jaw to press the nut into the bottom of the pocket. I then used the Allen wrench to verify the alignment was correct. I could have used the supplied needle nose pliers, but having a way to clamp and lock the nut in the jaws gave me an advantage. Simple workarounds like this will make your life easier and much less frustrating. Once I figured out how to get the square nuts into their pockets easily, it took me no time to get them into the correct placement each time. One of the things that surprised me was that there was no printed assembly manual. All the YouTube videos I'd watched for the Mark III always showed a printed assembly manual. The kit no longer has that. What it has instead is an online, somewhat interactive manual. I say somewhat interactive because it's not truly interactive, but it does allow you to reference various pictures to help you see what you are trying to assemble. 
I'll show you what I mean. There are only eight sections to the manual. Don't let that fool you. There can be 40 or more steps in each section. The longest section I remember was 66 steps and took me five and a half hours to complete. You guessed it. It was the E-axis assembly with the new extruder. If you take the time to read the introduction, and I suggest that you do, it will tell you to read the text next to the pictures. Don't rely only on the pictures to show you what to do. That is extremely good advice. As you go through the steps in each section, you will notice a large image on the left, and sometimes smaller images above the assembly text. Step 5 of the introduction tells you that you can hover your cursor over the large image and click it to get an even larger image. What it doesn't tell you is that by hovering your cursor over the smaller images, you can change which of them is displayed as the larger image. This is extremely helpful to know, as one image doesn't always cover the entire assembly step. The introduction also covers useful techniques like the screw pulling technique for easier assembly. The other interactive aspect of the online manual are the comments. I and others have added helpful ideas and techniques, like using forceps to place the square nuts in the comment sections of the various steps. You will see at the bottom of each step where you can either add a comment or view the comments that have already been added. These comments are from the author of the manual, Prusa Customer Service, and other kit builders. If you encounter an issue and there are comments on the step, chances are others also encountered the issue and may have left information you'll find useful. If you discover something you think others may find useful and there are no comments on it, I encourage you to leave a comment documenting what you found. It may help someone else later. One of the comments I left in the electronics section was that the supplied screwdriver is too small for the screws in the power bus. I have a larger Phillips head screwdriver and used it. That made tightening down the power bus without stripping the screw heads much easier. Overall, I would say that the online manual is excellent. It gives you the information you need in plain English. I can't say if the other languages are as good, but I would assume they are. And with the comments section, it is a living document, constantly updated with helpful tips and techniques to use. That is something that a printed document just can't do. Since the comments show you who made them and when they were made, you have a pretty good idea of people in the forums who may be able to help you. I also have found comments where people have stated they live in my state. That means I have people relatively close by who I may be able to get answers from. On top of that, there is also the chat support. If you are having a problem, there are no helpful comments about it, and you just can't seem to get around it, try the online chat. I have been told by several people that they are extremely helpful, and if they can't fix your problem, they can get you in contact with someone who can. So. Do you buy the kit or buy the assembled printer? Well, it depends. If you want something that works straight out of the box, I'd say buy the assembled printer. If on the other hand you want to save $200, which I believe is about the price of the MMU2S, just saying, and you want to learn how your printer works, I'd say buy the kit. Either way, there will be times when you have to do minor surgery on your printer. The uh, filament gets gummed up or you want to swap out parts. From what I've seen on various YouTube videos, this is just a part of life with a 3D printer. The assembly manual, which I assume was written by a native English speaker, and if you've ever had a model shipped from Japan, you know what I mean, is excellent. It's not perfect. I did have some confusion about wiring around the ANC card, but based on the number of comments and when they were made, I was one of the very first people to use this new manual. I expect that over time, the comments will fill in any gaps that there are in the manual, and I, I know for a fact that the author of the manual reads the comments and updates it as he can. I can't compare this manual, I can't compare this manual to other printer kit manuals because I've never built any others. I can say that I am very satisfied with, with this manual as it is. I know that the author comments in the manual and makes changes based on, on the comments. The comments are full of ideas to make assembly easier. The kit comes with all the tools you absolutely need. A few other tools that are easily obtainable uh, can be used but are not essential. If you've ever assembled a plastic model kit, then you probably have the skills it takes to assemble this printer. Don't worry about how long the assembly takes you. Just read and follow the instructions carefully 
and in a few in a couple of days you will have a printer ready for testing in fact that's my next step I'm 98% sure that I got the assembly correct, the mechanical assembly correct, and 95% sure that I got the wiring correct. Uh, as I said, there was some confusion uh, on the uh, plugs for the INC card. Uh, I will double check the manual before I go through the pre-flight. But once I once I got in there and started looking, and you know, as you as I got to the end of the section and realized I had some some plugs that weren't plugged in anywhere. I started looking through that section again and I found, oh, okay, they really did mean to plug them in even though they didn't necessarily specifically say so. Um, you know, they talked about uh, a plug, a, a, a new insert on the INC card uh, two, with two rows of, of pins. Uh, the top row goes to the MMU2S and they kind of left it at that. Uh, they, 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 they said the bottom row goes to this particular pin, but they didn't ever actually say plug it in. I, and so uh, it, it's very helpful if you read through the entire step before you start to actually do the instructions. Read the steps so you know what, what you're planning to do, and then go back to the beginning of that step, and as you read it, do what it says to do. Um, that's probably the easiest way I can think of to describe how to use this manual. Anyway, the pre-flight check will be my next video. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you uh, want to follow me through my adventures in 3D printing, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell. The bell will let you know whenever I upload a new video. Until next time, have a great day.